first review. Do not take if you even remotely care about your GPA. Nice guy, very smart, but completely ineffective as a professor. So I guess the implication is that the criteria for whether you are effective or not is the impact on your GPA. Should I keep going? Professor Neslik is funny, clearly very smart, but spends more time talking about gambling than teaching the material. If you are not a pre-med student, by absolutely no means should you take this course. Professor Crystal is difficult, snarky, and extremely unhelpful. A funny guy, but class could seem a little tedious at times when he would run out of material for the day, but refuse to let us out early. Well, not never. <laughs> the first day of class, he scared me a little because he comes off as pretty intense. Intense, really? You guys are in here filming me. I'm not intense. His monotonous tone is a recipe for an 80-minute nap. Half of the time, I don't understand him. The class was poorly organized, the lectures were confusing, and she had an unnecessarily convoluted formula for writing papers. Lacks structure. Too much reading, disjointed lectures, and overall just a terrible class. Too much reading? That's probably true. Disjointed lectures? Guilty as charged. Does not use PowerPoints and has a tendency to rant. Smart. Interesting. Except for the rambling, pointless political rants. <laughs> well, uh, what do you expect? I'm a, a rambling, pointless <laughs> political person. Crystal fills me with dread. He is unnecessarily difficult and his tests are ridiculous. My biggest regret with William and Mary was taking his class and he ruined me for biology. Endearingly absent-minded. Not exactly incompetent, but something like it. Wow, wow. I wonder what exact incompetence would be. I'd like to see that. His claim to fame is that nobody ever gets an A on his exams. Class gets very boring, but then again it's art history. When is it not boring? So I guess it's not his fault. Not a lot of substance to the class other than his regaling students with stories from his glory days on the hill and dropping names every two seconds. Well, first of all, I drop names every one second, not every two seconds, so that's not actually correct. Second, I had no glory days on the hill. I'm not sure there's such a thing as a glory day on the hill. Uh, regaling students with stories, um, I think that's probably accurate. Challenging class, very passionate about birds. That person, I'm going to give them an A retroactively. Pretty great guy. Thanks, Mom. Class was half lecture, half group discussion, but he is prone to interrupting and talking really so. Somehow he made tales of mythical beasts and ancient orgies boring. You may do well, but only in spite of her teaching style. He'd show up, give a rambling and convoluted lecture for three hours, then forget to even grade assignments. Completely one of those Chris Matthews inside the Beltway know-it-all types. Arrogant. Okay, <laughs> I'll accept that. I'm not, is that a criticism? I guess it's a criticism. Film theory insane without knowing how to set up a tripod. Uh, analyzes dubious things to death. Sometimes tries to pretend he knows things that he doesn't. I don't understand why he got Outstanding Faculty Award. Maybe he is good at teaching other bio classes. Certainly not this. Worst of all, he counts attendance. Oh, Jesus Christ, attendance, of course I do. Picture the counselor from South Park meets Mr. Burns with the humor slash attitude of Niles from Frasier. His lectures are meandering and have no point to them. You said these were nice. This class really lowered my self-esteem and made me hate biology with all my heart. The only reason I didn't withdraw was because I had to take the class. Uh, and the last point is, what's up with his shirts? Um, I have no idea. People have been asking me that question for years, and I just don't know how to answer that, that question. Bad handwriting. What? <laughs> I don't know what else to say. What? I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say.